Hello, I've just finished this tiny watercolour painting and while I was painting it, something clicked. So I'm going to be sharing with you a secret of how you can paint watercolours that you're genuinely happy with as a total beginner. It's super simple and it will work with anyone. But you have to concentrate. Let's go. The truth is, I have always hated watercolours. A year ago, if you asked me what my least favourite art material was, it would have been, you guessed it, watercolours. And it's not because of what you're thinking. I actually find watercolours gorgeous. I love to see how the colour naturally blends and gets carried through by the flow of water. It is great that they dry super fast and we can work in layers, they're so practical, you can carry them around anywhere. They're a dream to clean off, they're non-toxic. I could keep on talking on and on about how perfect watercolours are on almost every respect, but there's this one thing that has me absolutely terrified of them. I actually spent my entire three years of art school avoiding watercolours whenever I could. And the reason why watercolours are so intimidating to me is watercolours are the most unpredictable paint you can use. Water is a really difficult thing to control and since watering down the paint is literally the only tool that you have at your disposal to control the intensity of your colours, watercolours are very difficult to control as well. And that is what makes them so experimental and intuitive. It doesn't help you much to have a set image in your head that you're trying to accomplish through watercolours. It's actually the other way around. And this is the key thing that I realised as I was making this painting. I finally found out the reason for my frustration with watercolours since the beginning. To get a watercolour painting that you're genuinely happy with, you simply cannot be chasing the picture that you have in your head of how you want your painting to end up. And this is what has always frustrated me and I think keeps frustrating most people who are starting to paint. It is impossible that your watercolour painting will match your initial idea of it or the reference that you're working from. And there's several reasons for this. For example, with almost any other paint type, you could mix a colour that exactly matches your reference. But with watercolours, the shade of the paint will change based on the amount of water that you have in your brush at any particular time. The way that the paint will set on the paper varies radically as well, depending on the movement of your brush and on the amount of pressure that you place on it. And even on how humid or dry your environment or your paper are, and this is just the nature of watercolours. But there is this thing that I found out today as I was painting on my watercolour sketchbook. I had never realised this before. And for me, this is the key to working with watercolours in a way that alleviates all of that frustration and stress and intensity that comes with trying to make watercolours work as we want them to and not as they are designed to function. And the secret here is we are the ones who need to get comfortable with the unpredictable. Now, that doesn't mean that you should just grab your brush and work it randomly and try to be happy with whatever comes out of it. That's not how it works. <laughs> but have you noticed how I started this painting? I first picked a reference artwork, which in this case is this painting that I love by the Argentinian artist Laura Peretti. She's a artist based in New York, she paints these gorgeous free-flowing forms representing dancers. Anyways, I picked this reference but that painting is very likely impossible for me to exactly replicate in watercolours. The reason for that is it is an oil painting and you can see even from the photograph that it's made of quite thick layers of paint that at some point they slightly carry over part of the black background layer through the gaps of the outer layers of light skin tones. Well, this is not something you're able to do with watercolours. If you ever started a watercolour painting with a black background, then that's pretty much it. There's nothing else you can do with it. <laughs> Unless maybe trying to lift up some colour with a wet paper or something ugly like that. But that's not the point. The thing is, by picking a reference that I simply can't achieve, I was forced to use it more like a rough guide, and I was freed from the tendency to simply reproduce that painting. You definitely can apply this to other methods of painting as well, but it is much more crucial for watercolours than for any other. For me, the beauty and fun of art is really to find new images that I haven't gotten from anywhere else, 
And the thing with watercolors is they really make it easy for you to create something super unique because there's so much that you can't control. So if you stop chasing that specific idea that you have of the exact painting that you really want to make, then you will free yourself to utilize all the potential of watercolors because you're using their unpredictability as an asset, as something that's valuable rather than constantly trying to fight against it, which very typically ruins your painting. So I wanted to share with you this winning formula, let's say, that I'm pretty sure will let you love your paintings going forward. So number one, pick a reference, but be clear with yourself, you're not trying to copy this artwork. You will only focus on the composition and the contour. You can sketch down some line work for reference, for example. I've done that in graphite in this painting. Or you may even want to go straight in with your watercolor paints and that's it. I think the best way is to actually try both approaches and go with what feels better and natural to you. Now, after having a rough guide for the shapes that you want to paint, trust me, hide your reference image. This is when you should be completely free from the constraints of your reference. Ignore the color scheme, the shades. You are creating a completely new painting. No one has ever done what you're about to do. Make sure that you're focused on your own artwork and try to see where your painting is headed and what colors, what shades, what is it missing as it develops. It's better to be adaptive. Look at what is kind of growing out of what you're painting and adapt to what you feel it is needing at the moment. That, I think, is probably the best way to paint. Many times I deviate from this, but as an exercise, this will really change the way you work with watercolors, the final results that you get and how happy you are with them, which I think in turn will probably incentivize you to paint even more because you kind of feel like you like it. If on the other hand, you actually focus on your end result that you were trying to achieve and you find out that, you know, what you're creating actually doesn't match up to it, which will inevitably happen with watercolors, as I said, the effect that that will have on you is likely going to be a negative one. And finally, I would really appreciate it if you could like this video. This is a favor that I don't ask too often in this channel and it does have the potential to help me reach many more people which would also help me to be able to dedicate more time to this channel and to making videos. So thank you so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.